Hi everyone, and welcome to the first video for Math 133, uh, Calc 1. Um, we're going to start just by kind of talking about what is the fundamental object of study in a calculus class. The primary object of study is the function. Um, functions are things that we are familiar with, um, but, you know, just to make sure we're all on the same, the same level here. Um, a function we like to think of as a way of expressing one quantity in terms of another. Often this is done algebraically with a concrete formula. You'll remember things like the notation, say like y equals f of x, right? We're saying that the variable y somehow depends uh, on the input quantity x, and then there is some formula f that tells us what to do with that input. Um, so uh, maybe we can just kind of start with the definition, so a function uh, is a rule, I mean, it's a function we like to think of as a rule or a recipe, oftentimes it's given explicitly as a formula, uh, is a rule that assigns Okay, to each element I'll say x in 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 a set d, so d we like to think of as our set of input values, so x here is an input, okay, so each input gets assigned, uh, assigns to each element in a set d exactly one. exactly one element in a set R. Okay, R is going to be our set of obtainable outputs. So D, this is our set of inputs, which we call the domain. Okay, the set of inputs is called the domain. Here, this is our set of I'm going to be a little more specific than you might have seen. Not just the set of possible outputs, but the set of obtainable outputs. Obtainable outputs. This is what we call the range. Okay, this is what we call the range. Hence D and R, domain and range. Uh, and I'll, I'll clarify what I mean here about this obtainable uh, output in a second. Now, um, we use uh, uh, some notation here. So, notation So, if x is in D, so x here is in the domain of some function. Okay, we often write or let me say it this way, uh, say this a little bit differently, so if x is in D the corresponding output f of x, okay, where f here is the rule, f is the rule, where f is the rule. So the idea is that you take your input x, you apply the rule f, and that tells us what is our obtained output, what is our obtained output. So, in the past, when you've seen this notation, y equals f of x, 
Okay, this means y is obtained by doing f to x. So you take your input x again, you apply f, and you obtain the output y. Okay? So for example, Suppose, okay, I give you this function. So f of x equals x squared. Okay, I'll make a note here that really uh, I should include some data about what the domain is. So for example, here I'll just specify. We won't do this always or really that much at all. But let me just specify with domain all real numbers. So this is a function because it tells us what to do to an input, right? It's a rule that says, given an input x, the output is obtained by squaring the input. Okay, so for example, then uh, right, 9 is the same as f of 3 because... If we take 3 and we square it, we get 9. Okay. Now, here is where I want to talk about this idea of obtainable outputs, because notice that, well, not every real number is obtainable as an output of this function. So notice that negative 9 is not obtainable, right? You cannot square any number and get negative 9. So 9 is in R, it's in the range but negative 9 is not. Now, oftentimes this is how we think of functions, right? We are just given some explicit formula and then we manipulate it in some way. Um, but this is not the only way that we can work with functions. Uh, I think probably the next most common thing is we work with functions visually, right? We draw the graph of a function. So what do I mean by the graph? Given a function, okay, and here is how I will typically abbreviate the word function. So given a function, say f, with domain d, the graph graph of f, well, it's just a collection of ordered pairs collection of ordered pairs in the plane. Okay, so I'm going to describe uh, using set notation the graph. So it looks like it's this. It's the set of all ordered pairs where the first coordinate is some input value x. The y coordinate is just the corresponding output value, right, f of x. Such that x is in D. Uh, what do I mean by this vertical bar here? This vertical bar should read as such that. So it's the set of all ordered pairs x comma f of x such that x is in the domain. So you let your inputs range or let me say vary. You let your inputs vary over the entire domain D. Okay. You compute all of these corresponding outputs and then you just plot them as points in the coordinate plane. Okay. In other words, a 
this is one way I like to think of this, is that the, the graph of a function f is the set of all ordered pairs all ordered pairs say uh, x comma y such that the equation the equation y equals f of x is a true equation, meaning if I plug in x for x and I plug in y on this left hand side, then this equality that I've written is actually true for that particular choice of x and y. Okay, so it's like, a, it's like a solution set. A graph of a function is like a solution set. Okay, uh, I'll just do a quick example. Again, here the, the presumption is that this is material you're familiar with, but, but still it doesn't hurt. Um, so let's let, again, say f of x equals x squared. Okay, well, uh, hopefully we all know what the graph of this function looks like. Something like this. It's not perfect, but you know, use your imagination. So the green uh, curve here is the graph of the function x squared. Okay, and the idea is that you know, if you choose some input value along the x-axis, this has some corresponding output value here. Now we know what this needs to be. It needs to be nine. And so the ordered pair, the ordered pair, three comma nine lives on this graph because it satisfies this equation for this specific function. Right? If I plug in 3 for x, 9 for y, I get a true equation. Okay, so let's stop there.